The time is seven o'clock. The following program is transcribed. <laughs> Mutual presents The Mysterious Traveler. This is The Mysterious Traveler, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and terrifying. I hope you will enjoy the trip, that it will thrill you a little and chill you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can. As you hear the story I call... The Man in the Black Derby. Where are we going? Tonight we're going to delve into the mind of Florence Gordon, a young, attractive woman with a secret fear. A fear that is buried deep in her subconscious, but of late has more and more frequently crept into her conscious, leaving her pale and trembling. But it's just dusk, and Florence is entering Central Hospital to visit a friend who's a patient. As she walks to the information desk, an uneasy feeling comes over Florence. For a moment she stops and glances around the lobby of the hospital, as if searching for someone, and yet not sure what this person would look like. As she stares at the people about her, a nurse approaches. Is there uh, anything wrong, miss? No. No, there's nothing the matter. You seem so nervous, huh? Uh, I'd like to see Agnes Deering. Can you tell me the number of the room? Oh, I'm afraid you can't see her. She's very sick. Oh, please, she's an old friend of mine. I've come a long way to see her. May I please for just a minute? Well, all right. It's just down the hall to your right. Room 12. Thank you. As Florence Gordon walked down the hall, she unconsciously glanced back over her shoulder. There was no one following her. But as she reached the end of the hall and turned to her right, she bumped into a tall man wearing black dirt. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't notice you. Is this room 12? Yes, it is. Thank you. Hello, Agnes. Nice to see you. As soon as I heard you were ill, Arnold and I came right over to Madison City. That's awfully good. How do you feel? I'm, I'm quite tired. No, don't say that. The nurse said you were coming along all right. She was lying. Oh, you're lying. I'll never get well. Of course you will. No. I'll never get well. We'll go home again. Tell me, how was Chicago? It's the same as ever. You will see it again. No. I'll never see it again. Oh, sure. Arnold's fine. He's been delayed, but he'll be here soon. It's going to be good to see him again. I haven't had many visitors. Agnes, that man outside your door, isn't he a visitor? A man outside my door? Yes. He's wearing a black derby. He looks familiar. Black derby? Black derby? It's all very black. I'm going to die, Lord. Please, huh? It's a pretty flower. They all have black derbies. I'm afraid you'll have to leave now. Yes, miss. I'll come back later. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, you're still here. Yes, I am. Are you a friend of Agnes's? Yes, I'm a friend. If you'll excuse me, I'll go in to see her now. No, she's delirious. The nurse won't let anyone in now. She'll let me in. That's strange. Where have I seen him before? He frightens me. Such a strange face. Oh, poor Agnes, she looks so thin and pale. 
So terrible she's going to die. What a terrible thing it is to die. My purse. I left it in Agnes's room. I gotta go back. No one's here. Agnes. Agnes. No. She's not asleep. She's not breathing. Nurse. A moment later, in answer to Florence's cries, a nurse came running into the room. The nurse quickly summoned a doctor, who, after a brief examination, pronounced Agnes Deering dead. Florence, weeping hysterically, was led out of the death room by the nurse. Well, a few minutes later, Florence's husband, Dr. Gordon, and took her back to the small hotel where they were staying. He gave her a step and sat by the bedside, holding her hand as she fell asleep. When Florence awoke the next morning, her husband introduced her to Dr. Richard, an associate who worked with the psychiatrist. For both men listened quietly as Florence spoke about the first Oh, I know they were stressed. She was lying there so sick and pale. And then she became delirious. When I came back from my purse, she was dead. Poor Agnes, she had a tough time of it. Did you know Agnes Deering, Dr. Richards? Yes, she came to my office once. There was nothing I could do for her. Nothing at all. The man with the black jersey. He had something to do with her death. Darling, what man with the black jersey? He stood outside the door of Agnes' room. Just stood there. Right after he walked in. She died. I see. Then you attribute Mrs. Deering's death to the man in the black jersey. Yes. I know it sounds foolish, but he seemed to wait for the proper moment to walk in. It frightened me. That man has something to do with death. Now, please, Florence, you'll get yourself into a state again. I can't help it. There's some horrible connection between that man and her death. I'm throwing them in here. You were on the elevator with me? I've seen him before. I know I have. Can you remember, Mrs. Gordon, where you've seen him before? Think about it. No. No, I can't think. That man had the face of death. Don't you think, Mrs. Gordon, that death is something that happens? It isn't somebody. I know. I know inside of me that he exists. Tell me, what do you fear most? I... I suppose death. None of us want to die. That's only natural. But to be concerned with death constantly is a sure way to die. Suppose you come down to my office. We'll have a chat. I'm sorry, Dr. Richards. I'd rather not. Well, please, Florence. It would be better. You're not afraid of doctors, too. I don't believe there's anything the matter with me. No, no. I just know that the man in the black derby has something to do with death. Well, I've got to leave. If you change your mind, I'll drop over to you. Who knows? Maybe the man in the black derby is death. Won't hurt to talk about it. With this last suggestion, Dr. Richard said goodbye to Florence and left. Arnold told his wife he would return in a minute and followed Richards to the hotel corridor. There he questioned Richard anxiously. Well, Doctor, what do you think? This fear your wife has of death, its very intensity shows how deep rooted it is. She needs treatment. Yes, I felt that all along, but you heard what she said. She absolutely refuses to place herself under your care. Yes, I know, I know. Uh, don't urge her to see me. You'll only antagonize her. I, I think that in a very short time she'll come to see me for treatment of her own will. Well, darling, we'd better go to bed. It's very late. I'm not sleeping. Still thinking about the man in the black derby? I can't get him out of my mind. Florence, as your husband and the doctor, please take my advice. There's nothing really to be... Oh. Got... What happened? This car smashed into a telephone pole right outside this hotel. Oh, good heavens! Oh, come on, Florence. Someone's hurt. Yes, get my medical bag and hurry. Quickly, Florence snatched up her husband's medical bag and followed him from their suite into the corridor. Arnold cast an impatient look at the elevator indicator and motioned Florence to follow him down the stairs. It took them but a few seconds to descend three flights to the lobby. 
Well, as they rushed out into the street, they could see the wrecked car just a few yards away. Oh, look, the driver's pinioned behind the wheel. Florence, that man standing there. Get him to come over and help me. Well, I wonder why he's just standing there. Go over and get him. Hurry. I beg your pardon. Were you talking to me? My husband needs help. The driver's hurt pinioned behind the wheel. Your husband? Yes, he's a doctor. Please hurry. It's too late. How do you know it's too late? We picked her up and carried her into the outer room. She came too. I thought I recognized you. The man in the black derby. Arnold! Arnold! It's too late, Florence. The man's dead. I know. You know? Yes. He told me. The man in the black jerk. For a long moment, Arnold stared at his terror-stricken wife, then took her gently by the arm and led her into the hotel and up to their suite. There he gave Florence a sedative and watched her fall into an uneasy sleep. The next morning, when Florence awoke, she said nothing about the man in the black derby, but all day long she kept looking nervously out the window, and the slightest noises made her jump. As night came, she paced up and down the room, unable to sit still. Arnold, trying not to show his anxiety, spoke to her soon. Why don't you sit down, darling, and rest a bit? The mysterious man keeps following me everywhere. Hospitals, accidents. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I've seen him before. I know his face. What if you have? It doesn't mean anything. I'm going to die, Arnold. Now, please, stop talking nonsense. I am, Arnold. Look, darling, why don't you go see Dr. Richards? He can really do you a lot of good. There's nothing he can do for me. Well, how about coming along with me? I've got to drive to Westville on a case. Arnold, you're practicing. Isn't here. You're only physical. Yes, I know, dear, but several of the local doctors have learned that I'm a lung specialist and have asked me to examine some of their patients. Why don't you come with me, Vaughn? The ride will do you good. I don't feel like going there. All right, if you want to stay here by yourself. No! I'll go with you. Come on, then. Here, here's your coat. It's such a dark night. Yes, it is dark tonight. Door of the car. It's open. Oh, that's right. Well, I, I must have left it open myself. They're always so careful about locking the car. Now look, Florence, don't start your imagination going again. Believe me, it wasn't the man in the black derby. I simply forgot to shut the door. Now, please, get in. How far is it to Westville? Oh, it's about ten miles. Such a lonely road. Ah, oh, that makes it even better. You can be sure you won't meet anyone, especially your mysterious stranger. Arnold, why do you keep looking in the mirror? Why, it's just a habit. I always look in the mirror. There's no car behind it. Well, it's just a habit, Florence. <gasps> what was the matter? I thought I saw something in the mirror. I thought I saw someone in the back seat. There's no one in the back seat. Turn around. Look for yourself. It's so dark, I can't see. Well, just switch the light on the side and see for yourself. Oh, there's no one. I could have sworn there was someone there. All right. Now that you're satisfied, you turn the light off, huh? I can't shake off the feeling that someone else is in the car. But you must know there's no one here. You just saw that yourself. Maybe it is my imagination, but I have such a dread feeling of something terrible about to happen. It's as if... Ah! What is it? What's the matter? Stop the car! Stop the car! <laughs> Why did you scream? What's wrong? I saw him. I saw him. The man with the black derby? Yes. In the mirror. He was serious. Looking straight at me. It was all. Now calm yourself, Lawrence. Listen. Your mysterious stranger exists only in your mind. Can't you understand? I saw him. I tell you, I saw him. Lawrence, that isn't possible. You only think that... It's... The man... The road. Look. A dead tree across. It's right in front of us. Right around a blind curve. We hadn't stopped when I screamed. We would have been killed. I, I don't understand. I, I can't figure it out. I understand. It was meant for me. Do you understand, Arnold? My time is up. I'm going to die. <laughs> 
Unnerved by the near accident, half believing Florence's statement, Arnold turned the car around and started driving back to Central City. As he drove, he spoke long and earnestly to Florence, pleading with her to consult Dr. Richards. At last, Florence gave in and agreed to do as her husband asked. Arnold, afraid that she might change her mind, drove directly to Dr. Richards' home. Shortly afterwards, they were seated in Dr. Richards' house. Well, so you saw your mysterious stranger again. If I hadn't seen him in time, both Arnold and I would have been killed. You say you saw him in the mirror of the car? Yes, that's right. Well, now, I've driven the car, and Arnold will bear me out. You can't see... Excuse me. You can't see anything in the mirror at night, unless there's a car behind you. Both of you admit there wasn't any car. But I'm positive I saw him. Don't you think that in your state of mind, fear plus darkness might make you see anything? You can put mysterious interpretations on many things when you're frightened. She's even got knee jittery now. Panic is contagious. What I'm really interested in is where did you first see the man with the black jerk? I saw him at the hospital when my friend died. But you said you knew him. You'd seen him before that. Yes, I have. Must have been a long, long time ago. That's what you've got to tell me. Do you think you can remember? I can't. Can you describe his face? It's kind of blurred. I can't describe him, but I... I recognize him when I see him. He's always wearing a black jersey. Try to concentrate on where you saw him first. I can't remember. All I know is that it has something to do with death. A long time ago. If you can remember where you saw him for the first time, we'll be getting somewhere. While you're tired, we'll stop. I'll expect you tomorrow evening, same time. You don't believe he exists, do you? You think I'm seeing things? No, no. I think he's real, all right. Very real. Well, how did Dr. Richardson and you get along tonight? Not very well. Talked to me a long time, but I still couldn't remember anything. Well, it takes time. You've got to keep going to it. I'm not going to see him anymore. It's no use. Oh, please, darling, don't cry. I'm going to die. I'm afraid. Now, you must stop thinking about it. Florence, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go to the carnival, huh? They set one up right outside the town. It's been years since we've been to one. I want to stay right here. As a favor to me. Will you? All right. Oh, that's right. If the man in the black derby follows you tonight, I swear I'll punch him right in the nose. A few minutes later, Arnold and Florence were driving to the carnival. Arnold trying his best to make Florence forget her fear. They parked on the outskirts of the carnival grounds, and Florence reluctantly left the car and followed her husband toward the lights and music. Soon they were in the midst of the pushing, swirling, joy-seeking crowd. But the noise and excitement and color had no effect on Florence. She only stared at everything through unseeing eyes. Oh, it's like the old days, isn't it? Yes, like the old days. Please, darling, it's pointless to keep looking behind you. There's no one but all these people who are trying to have a good time. I can't help it. Well, just hold on a minute. Arnold, this is different. Come on, folks, get the thrilling alive. The biggest Ferris wheel in all of Wayne County. See the lights of Central City below you for 25 cents. Only one quarter of a dollar. Sacred, sighting, thrilling, only 25 cents. Right, Look, near the Ferris wheel. How would you like to go up in it? No, I, I don't think I Oh, come on. I'll get some tickets. Uh, two, please. Yes, sir. Two of it. Oh, next. It'll be a lot of fun. I sure take it. Well, of course it is. Here, here. We'll take this compartment. Come on. No. No, I'm not going. Why, what's the matter now? Go away from here. Please. All right, all right, folks. Just room for two more on the biggest Ferris wheel in the country. Only 25 cents for a quarter of a dollar. All on. There she goes. What in the world has got into you? Why did you run away? I saw him. I saw him. Where? Sitting in the Ferris wheel by himself. All by himself. Oh, for heaven's sake, darling. You just imagined that you saw him. He was sitting in the next compartment to the one we were going to take. Sitting there watching me. Well, I guess it's no use. We may as well go. What is it? There's something wrong. The Ferris wheel. One of the compartments has come loose. There's two people in it. Good Lord, they're going to be killed. He killed him. He killed him. It was meant for me. <laughs> you 
mustn't let your imagination become your master. You mustn't. Must be something like you. You've been punished. You've done nothing, even. And you're not being punished. Sooner or later, you'll catch up to me. Darling, look, I've got to go on an emergency call to the hospital. Do you want to ride with me? Why do you have to go? Well, this is an emergency operation. They need a lung specialist, and I'm the only one in town. I have to go. I won't get into the car again. I won't be long. Why can't you leave me alone? I'm afraid I'll have to. I won't stay here alone. All right, that's how you feel. Patients may die because I wasn't able to get... Well, you'll be right back. The minute I'm through. I'll keep calling you on the phone. Keep the door bolted and don't be afraid. After all, you're in a hotel. You can get help in a minute. Please hurry like that. Please. I'll be back as fast as I can. Goodbye, darling. I'm alone. I'm really alone. There's no one here but me. No one. No one. No one. Oh, I can't carry on like this. I can't. I don't want to say it. 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 There's no one here. No one. No one. There's someone in the closet. Oh. Nothing. Evan asked. I don't need to call. You should be back by now. Maybe you're going maybe something happened to him instead of me. No. Me, the man in the black derby dress. Oh, I'm Hello. Hello. Hello, darling. Are you all right? Oh, yes, Arnold. Yes, I'm. I'm all right. Oh, no, that's fine. No visitors. No Arnold. No one's come yet. I'll be over in a few minutes. I'm only a few blocks away. Hello? Hello? Lawrence? He's here. He's here. He's come. Lawrence? Lawrence? Hello? Hello? Lawrence, I'll be right over. No. Now, don't come near me, please. Come this way. We haven't any time. I won't go with you. I won't. You must. There's no time. You've got to come. Leave me alone, please. Please, leave me alone. You can't go through the door. The hotel is a fire. There's another way. Come along. Help! Help! You can't go through the window. It's three stories down. Get away from me. If you won't come, I'll have to force you. No, I'm going to jump. There is no time to waste. I'll have You'll to. You'll never get me. Florence. Florence, it's me. Arnold. Don't let him come near me. Don't let him. Can someone call an ambulance and hurry! <laughs> come in, Dr. Richie. How is she? Internal injuries, her condition is fair. She's been delirious. Mother, don't go with him. He's the man that's following me. No. She keeps repeating that about her mother. It's beginning to be clear to me now. Hey, Mother, don't leave me. No, she's coming out of it. I've got to talk to her. Florence. Florence. Oh, where, where am I? You're in the hospital, darling. Oh, I had a horrible dream. I dreamt that my mother... Went off with the man in the black shirt. That's it. That's where I first saw it. My mother died when I was five. The physician who attended it wore a black shirt. He was the same man. 
You were very much attached to your mother, weren't you? I love you more than anyone else in the world. Yes, and since then, every time you see a black derby, you associate it with death. This is an old-fashioned house. A lot of people still wear derbies. The man... The man who came into my hotel. Well, I... I checked on that, dear. He was the assistant manager of the hotel. Mm -hmm. He opened your door with a pass key to see if everyone was out of their room because of the fire. Then he wasn't there. You really think it's just... An association. Of course it is. This sort of phobia is quite common. Now you go back to sleep. You'll never be bothered by the man in the black derby again. I believe. It's so wonderful to be alive. I'm so... She's falling asleep again. You made up the story of the assistant manager, didn't you? Yes, I did, Dr. Richards. Good. A lie is sometimes necessary. Probably she imagined someone came into her room. I don't know. Her room was bolted. It was never opened. No one could possibly have come in. Except... Except what? A black derby was found in the room. <laughs> This is a mysterious traveler again. How did you enjoy our trip? Very strange about that black derby that was found in Florence's room, isn't it? Perhaps Florence ought to place an advertisement in the lost and found column. But on the other hand, that mightn't be such a good idea. The owner of the hat might not only call for the hat, but uh, the person who found it as well. Now, I recall another young lady who was unfortunate enough to... Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. You've just heard The Mysterious Traveler, a series of dramas of the strange and terrifying. All names of characters in tonight's story were fictional, and any resemblance to the names of actual persons was purely coincidental. In tonight's cast were Maurice Tarplin, Grace Matthews, Ted Osborne, John Larkin, and Helen Titus. Original music was played by Paul Taubman. Mysterious Traveler is written, produced, and directed by Bob Arthur and David Cogan. (laughs) 